Welcome to Pickleball Journey. Today we are talking about three key things for 4-0 and above players. Let's jump right into it. Before we jump in, if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Also hit the like button. And stay tuned to the end where we're gonna give away some of these hoodies and shirts. All right, so the first tip we're talking about is serve and return. So uh, we're looking at the serve tactically. At this point, we're not teaching you how to hit the serve. Uh, we're assuming as a, uh, to become a 4-0 and above, you already fundamentally know how to do that. Uh, but tactically, we're talking about two things here. The first one, uh, for 4 0 and above, you really want to be hitting all of your serves deep. Uh, so I'm just going to hit some serves here. We're not, I know we've done some videos in the past on, on different serve spins, but uh, today we're just hitting uh, straightforward serves and, and focusing on getting these deep. So we'll hit a couple here. And, and notice we do have a, uh, when you're practicing this, set up a target uh, maybe two to three feet from the baseline whether it's a cone or... Stack of balls. Yeah, it could be a stack of balls or if you got clothes in your bag, whatever it is, just to give yourself a target, uh, that really helps. Uh, so I'm gonna hit a couple more of these here. Oh, that's a good go, one. Right on the line. Yeah. Well, a little deep there. One more here. Hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't hit ya. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing. You really wanna focus on hitting deep balls with your serve. Uh, the next thing that uh, when I'm playing, when we're playing in a tournament, we're looking for, uh, and anyone four and above, immediately look for your opponent's weakness. So do mm -hmm. they have a weaker backhand, a weaker forehand, and then consistently hit more to that side. So I'm looking, hey, is Elisha's forehand or backhand stronger? I'm gonna pick on that. If both are about the same, then I'm gonna hit more uh, serves deep still, but I'm gonna hit it out wide. So I'm gonna open up that court uh, so that in doubles, it opens up the middle and we can take it down the middle. Yeah, and what helps out is being able to position yourself a little wider yep. on the serve so that you can get the angle to get them out wide. And why this is important is you're creating a distance that's greater from the kitchen line. Uh, a diagonal is always greater than a straight line forward. So if you can pull them out here, they're gonna have a harder time getting to the kitchen line. You're gonna give yourself more room when you're hitting that third ball drop, when Justin's hitting the third ball drop. Yeah. So we'll show you, just hit a couple, a yep. little more out wide, and I'll show you how, how, how I'm gonna try here. to get to that kitchen line, right? I'm moving in. So I'm about here, right? I'm about here when he hits that uh, third ball drop versus right on the kitchen line. If Justin hits that ball, and I, you know, middle of the court, go ahead, middle of the court, I can come in, and now when he's hitting the ball, I'm already at the kitchen line being an offense. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. And I think that brings us to the, the second part where we're talking about returns. And Elisha, what, it, what are some key things when we're thinking about, hey, we wanna, as a 4-0, what do we wanna be doing on our returns? Yeah, ta tactically speaking, we wanna be starting back as, as far as possible. So. Um, the distance, sometimes it's difficult because some backstops are really short and some are a little greater. But we want to start back pretty far so that if a good server is hitting that ball deep, we can move forward into the serve. It's always easier to move forward than it is to move back. So if I'm on the, the baseline here and he's hitting a serve deep and I'm moving backward when I'm hitting a ball, I'm now not enabling myself to be able to move back to the kitchen line with as much energy or uh, momentum. So I wanna be able to be as far back as possible, moving forward into the court so that I can get to the kitchen line as fast as I can. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we wanna kinda cheat a little bit for our dominance, right? So tactically speaking, I favor my forehand side. So what Justin was talking about, um, I wanna, I want to be able to hit that often. So I'm going to kind of cheat over to the right a little bit when he's serving so that I can hit most forehands when I'm moving to the kitchen line versus my backhand shot. Um, not, to, not to get away from the fact that you should still train your, your, your weakness, right? But when you're in the competition, you want to hide those weaknesses and be able to uh, kind of uh, raise your strengths up in, in, in the moment of battle. So those are the biggest two things tactically you can, you can do to adjust and give yourself the advantage on the returns. Yeah, 
And Elisha, if you're, because I know you talked about favoring one side, if you're a 4 0, let's say you're a righty, where would you kind of stand uh, yeah. realistically? If, if, so, a lefty, I would be over here. Righty, I would be realistically about right here. Yeah. So that um, I'm not giving too much room to where he can like hit aces on me out wide. But I'm also, if he still hits down the middle, I can adjust my feet real quick and hit a forehand. So if I'm hitting a backhand, he better be pasting that center line, hitting that backhand. So I would do like wherever your normal is, I would go one, essentially one shuffle over as a cheat. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's important to know yourself, you know, know how fast you are, uh, know how quickly that you can get around the ball. Uh, if you're not too quick, uh, it might not be wise to cheat too much and run around the ball, but just work on that weakness. Uh, make sure you stay out of the kitchen, unlike Elisha, but hop into the kitchen for their awesome curated content on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, they've got it all. So the number two thing uh, that we're going to go over is neutralizing a shot. This is one of those things that we need to be doing as 4-0 players and above, and we need to be able to do it well. We have two tips to go over about neutralizing shots. These, when you're playing high level, they're going to be coming fast. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is making sure our paddle is out in front and it's, we're in a simple motion. We're not trying to take big swings. We're just blocking the ball, having soft hands. So as you can see, when Justin hits a couple balls, I'm just keeping my paddle out in front. And I'm kind of just blocking it and raising it very softly. So the softer, the softer Justin hits the ball, the more I go through, the harder, the softer I go. It's kind of a pendulum, just like that. The number two thing is making sure that my footwork is in position. If I just stand here and he hits the ball hard and I just try to move my paddle around, more than likely, I'm not gonna be in position to hit the ball well. So I'm gonna shank or I'm gonna miss hit it and it's just not gonna go where I want it to go. So we need to make sure that our feet are in position. Justin's gonna explain a drill where we can really use this in um, every position in the court. Yeah, so one thing uh, we like to do is, uh, basically I'm gonna be at the net like I am now. He's just gonna be working his way forward to the kitchen line and then working his way back. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just continue to hit shots here. This allows you to get used to neutralizing the ball from all areas of the court. Yeah. So and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna err on the far side. So nothing in the net. I'm making sure that I'm getting over the net so I can inch in. So not hitting anything even close to the net. I'm trying to get it at his feet. And then once I get to the no, kitchen line, I'm gonna back up every step. And we keep going back. And as the person hitting volleys here, you're giving him all kinds of different paces, speeds, uh, spins, and you're, you're just trying to give him different looks at different balls here. Good. So I'm gonna start back at the kitchen again. And as you can see, I'm gonna split step and then step back. Ready, step back, ready for the ball again. Step back, ready for the ball again. Pop it up, ready Good. for the ball, come in. Good, yes. and as you'll see, uh, when you do this type of drill, he's really getting all kinds of different shots here. Yep. Uh, just gets you really comfortable all over the court. Yeah. All right, so the final thing that we see 4-0 and above players doing uh, is having good volley game. And so uh, what I mean by that, there's two specific things that we see 4-0 uh, and above players do. The first one, decision making. So any good player in pickleball has to make good decisions. And so there's really a couple decisions when you're, we're gonna be both at the net hitting some dinks. And you'll see with most 4-0 players, they're making good decisions up here where they're, they're mixing it up between letting it bounce and taking it out of the air. Notice he got that one out of the air. It takes time away from your opponent. So by making that decision, again, that's taking the time away from his opponent and it can allow him to get on uh, the offense. Yep. The second thing that we're gonna look at is kind of a, a aggressive ball, but on a ball that you generally wouldn't be aggressive on. So uh, the higher level you get, the more you can make these shots versus you know lower. When you're trying to be aggressive down here, it's very difficult without hitting a certain shot. So that certain shot is a top spin uh, volley. 
So uh, one player you see doing this really well is Ben Johns, is he'll take a ball that you generally wouldn't be aggressive on. He will be aggressive. The opponent thinks it's going out, but it drops in because of the spin he puts on the ball. So um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna try to do it. We'll see if we can do it. See if I'm four or above. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna take a ball that generally isn't gonna be super aggressive. I'm gonna try to roll it at uh, uh, Justin really fast, kind of towards his chest. Justin's gonna get out of the way because maybe he thinks it's going out because it's gonna be fast enough. And we're gonna see if it drops in. So um, essentially, you get like a ball. I'm gonna wait for that one that's a little bit. That's the ball. Missed it a little bit. We'll get back into the rally. That's it. So we'll get out of the way again. But essentially, you're taking that, that paddle and you're just coming up on it and through pretty quickly. You're not trying to flick your wrist too much. You're just going up a lot. Um, and allowing your wrist to relax a little bit. And this really plays into that first tip of decision making where yeah. you're looking to, to get on the aggressive, take the ball at the right time when it's popped up just high enough where you can go on offense. Look yeah, that. so that's the one where it's like, I'm kind of gonna go at and be aggressive, but I make sure I put a lot of tops on it so it does drop in. We'll go one more time. I don't feel like I got it, you know? <laughs> All right, here we go, right here. Gotta get a good one here. Come on, Elisha. There That's it, is. it. Come on. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. All right, and now for the giveaway. If you haven't already got one of these sick quarter zips, be sure to get yours today. We are giving away uh, one of these new products that we haven't released yet. Uh, we've got hoodies, t-shirts, all kinds of different things we'll let you choose from. Uh, anyone that makes a purchase of one of those quarter zips in the next week will be uh, entered in to be randomly selected for one of these products for free as well. Uh, so make sure you buy one in the next week.